before we get started on this Operation Curtain Call, I'm just here to let you all know that the next episode is going to be Operation Dead End. And on that occasion, I actually wanted to let you all know that anyone can join in and have a lot of fun. We're not going to have any rules when it comes down to attacking Operation Dead End. The only rule is going to be, please wait for my signal before we start to attack. But you guys can all go ahead and join in. You guys can see it. It's anyone can join. And anyone above 300 medals is more than welcome. I actually want to get 50 members up there before we get started because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to give you guys half a day before we actually get started on Operation Dead End. And I think it's going to be pretty exciting. So that being said, it is time for Operation Curtain Call. Hey, what is up, you guys? It is Alpha Force, and welcome back to another episode of Boom Beach. And right now, we're back with the Task Force Tour. And this time, we're doing Operation Curtain Call. Curtain Call is the semi final Task Force operation in Boom Beach, the second hardest one. And this is before the update. Right now, I'm actually doing a uh, voiceover commentary over this entirety of the Task Force Tour. But you guys can just see the bases in the screen right now uh, while I'm going to be going over the Task Force Tour and some stuff that I feel I should be sharing with you guys when it comes down to the task force tour um it's been a rough experience honestly like i really had no idea it was going to be uh, so long winded and ended up being postponing and having all of these technical issues that i had uh, i also feel that i should be apologizing to a few members that kind of felt that they were neglected but then again in the beginning of the task force tour i also said i'm going to be doing stuff with my own pace and you guys who were joined in basically said okay that is fine so i'll just accept that but still regardless of that um i kind of felt bad for that and i'm really excited to do operation dead and tomorrow uh with the task force tour right now with the with the group we got 27 members left and we are actually going to try to take down another base to see who's active or not and then tomorrow you guys will be joining in the moment you guys will be getting this video and um then after that it is that and that we're going to be doing uh, a lot of you guys have been asking me what is going to be happening with the task force because I will be leaving towards my original task force. Uh, there's still people in there that want to stay in there. So if you guys are interested in joining that task force just for the sheer fact of joining in, I'm going to try to make sure to assign a leader that's going to be um, actually leading the task force because it's a task force of great people and people seem to have a lot of fun being in the task force. And, you know, it's just a great thing that uh, these guys are able to connect together as well because unfortunately i'm not able to invite all of you guys down in redemption some of you guys are able to join but a lot of you guys are not able to join in and that's kind of unfortunate so as you guys can see mizuki was attacking and didn't listen to the instructions you know um if we're going to be doing that and tomorrow the only request that i got is please 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 wait until i'm done with uh, actually checking out all of the uh attacks and it's going to be a little bit different this time around um boomich actually crashed um it's going to be a little bit different this time around the way we're going to be doing that and is i'm going to show you guys every single attack speed up and I'll show you your name in the screen if you're part of the task force. So that way you're getting a little shout out. So uh, just make sure you're active and attacking. And it will make for a, a great finale episode of the montage over here. So as you guys can see right now going through the list. 34 members is kind of outdated. And I actually decided to kick out Mizuki. Because you know that's not really cool that, uh, that you're not li really listening to instructions. Because literally just before that I was like please wait until I attack. And then he just doesn't read the chat and bam. You know so that those are kind of things that, that that makes me kind of itchy i'm like i don't really want to be like a dictator or anything like that but it kind of really annoys me the moment whenever people do that anyway let's actually take a look at this base this is commander commander is a very interesting base it always has these rocket launcher shock launcher combination down there and then at the ending you guys will actually see all of the boom cannons down there which is just absolutely insane um commander is one of those bases which i'm thinking like i really like the way this base is set up to be and you really notice this kind of a difference between several bases for example commander is a base that is still pretty high level but isn't the hardest type of base um you actually got a few bases out there on boom beach which which are ridiculously hard like Titanic and um, Sheena and Ransom but then you also got like the Black Rivers and the Ballas and the Axel which are a little bit easier to see so that is a thing on the self as well I think we're gathered towards the harder base right now Ballast over there uh, we still got three bases to review 
Ballast is also one of those easy bases that you can just attack from the back down there. Uh, what I like about this base is that you got several ways of actually tackling this base, but the most obvious way to actually go around doing that is by attacking from the left side down there. All you need to do is take out the mortars at the left side, then head over straight to the flamethrowers and then make your way up to the boom cannons. So that definitely is an interesting thing, but be very careful of those rocket launchers because those rocket launchers are gonna be extremely deadful, uh, deadly. Uh, one thing that I didn't know about warriors, because usually you're going to be attacking these with warriors, is that the warriors got nerfed a little bit. It seems that on the forum people said that the warriors actually got 25% less health, or 15%, 50% uh, less health than before. So that was definitely a thing to take into consideration as well. And this is all pre-update footage, so you shouldn't take this one for granted. Right now, Ransom. Level 139, this is one crazy base, like, I honestly have no idea how people are gonna be going how to take this one out. Um, with warriors, I, say, I, I, I would say, like, head over to, like, just kinda try to hug the wall and make your way up there. Because those machine guns and those flamethrowers really won't be reaching if you're at the far back side of this base. Uh, but then again, you still got those rocket launchers over there firing away onto the warriors. So that's definitely going to be an issue. And of course, those shock launchers as well. We're talking about a building defensive damage of 331% and a building health of 853. That makes the power core go up to a total of almost or... Yeah, 1.5 million health, which is really crazy. And then the last base we're going to be attacking is going to be Machina. And Machina is going to be one of the crazy bases. It's pretty much near the shore, but then still, there's a lot of defenses in front of there, including those rocket launchers and those boom cannons. And I don't really need to explain to you how crazy this base is going to be, but if you were to be attacking from the right side, these are the builds you should take into consideration. Definitely those rocket launchers. Look at how much health they have. They basically have the equivalent of a town hall. Same thing with the boom cannons as well. And the rest of these buildings, all like more than... Uh, more than 80,000 health or something like that. That is just really crazy. Like, normally, whenever I'm attacking a base, it is already pretty tough to take out the base like this, but with a masterpiece of 900% uh, and above, it comes down to the power core being extremely hard to take out, but also the regular buildings as well. So, that being said, these were all of the... Um, these were all of the bases. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to get to the old reversal, which actually did a commentary already, which I didn't lose, about the attacks that we've already done and show you guys the highlights. There's about three or four highlights that I want to show you guys because, unfortunately, I have no idea what we did in the other attack. So I have no idea what to commentate. So I'm going to be getting up to the other reversal. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to see you guys soon. A day after curtain call, I'm gonna show you guys the replies right now. We're tuning in with Momo11 trying to take his test on distortion that uh, is right now called Mercury for some odd reason, but that is obviously because we're doing a different task force attack right now. As you guys can see, Momo right now already took out all of the power cells, moves his way up to the machine gun, and uh, then goes straight to the boom cannons and the sniper towers, and in result, we actually did manage to take out the boom cannon, drops the flare onto the next boom cannon, and still manages to squeeze in that sniper town down there. And I'm just going to show you guys the uh, most interesting replays. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to take out uh, all of the buildings. But as you guys can see, this is about it for uh, Mercury, or in this case, Distortion. So right now, tuning in with the second attack from Lee. Already took out the boom mine and a regular mine. Right now, uh, dropping all of the rifleman in here. And do do get pulverized quite a bit before he actually decides to drop his shock. I think he kind of wanted them to gather around before he actually made it up there. But it is not recommended, especially on this map. And that is why I'm showing you guys this attack. To use only rifleman. Because as you guys can see, multi-targeting, everything gets damaged. And everything dies really fast, especially on these task force operations. Then, drops a flare to the right side and that is kind of unfortunate still manages to drop uh, the shock bomb down there but uh, yeah unfortunately it is not the best attack in the world but that's what I want to show you guys to also give you guys some tips and advice do not use only rifleman when everything over here is like the first layer of defenses are all like double targeting mortars flamethrowers machine guns and it really is not going to be working out if you are uh, you know you're using only the riflemans the last attack of the day I want to show you guys taking out the machine machine gun is the one of JT 
and he's only using the Zookas, which makes for an interesting combination here because, uh, well, uh, right now it would be a great position or a great moment to actually use that because uh, uh, according to my understanding, right now using the Zuka would be the best way to actually go around uh, taking down this base. So let's just see what JT has to offer in this one. Makes his way up to the power cells and look at how fast these all get taken out. Drops a correctional flare to make sure that they're all grouped tied together. And right now, three power cells go down like nothing. Then, makes his way up to the sniper towers. Gets taken out just like that. Just like that, it all gets taken out. And luckily for him, right now his Zookas aren't under fire by the sniper towers because they cannot reach. But still, he's taking out them power cells over here like an absolute badass. So what's going to be happening right now? That power cell got taken out. And right now, he drops the flare and starts to get into the base and actually try to take out all of these sniper towers over here. He decides to drop two shock bombs, one onto the boom cannons and the other one on the sniper towers. The sniper towers are just as that. He has the boom cannon. It is all one hit. So as you guys can see, look at the uh, health disappearing of the sniper tower like snow for the sun. It is absolutely insane and really crazy to see as well. This is one times the speed and look at the destructive force of the Zookas over here. Actually on Operation Curtain Call taking down uh, all of these buildings just with ease. With ease, these all get taken out and boom, all of the sniper towers right now gone. So what are we going to be doing? Go straight to the cannon over here to see what we're able to do here and still get fired upon. And then after that he actually makes his way up to the power core by dropping a flare on there i would have probably like taken out some of the other buildings i would have probably been able to take out the rider cannon over there but you know jt is just a boss like that goes straight to the base and you know tries his best to do as much damage as he can unfortunately we did not follow up with that but still regardless of that very nice attack from jt and uh, yeah that's going to be concluding this episode of boom beach of the task force tour tomorrow it is time for operation dead end make sure you guys stay tuned for that once again you guys are able to join in all you need to do is send your uh just press join and or app apply or something like that on the task for it will all be in the video description down below so for now i want to thank you guys so much for watching and as always make sure that if you guys like this video to boom, give it a thumbs up that being said this has been reversal for boom beach i'm gonna be signing off and i'll see you guys tomorrow with operation dead end